All right, so what I just did here is I flapped that down to bare metal for the most part. You can see that slit that I cut out in it when I was doing the pounding on it to try to reshape that fender. Um, got two coats of fiberglass with the cloth on this side, as already mentioned, but that light, you can really see how wide that is in there. Uh, and it would probably be okay now as it is to go ahead and fill, but just as an additional um, support and backing, I'm gonna fiberglass this side as well, and uh, probably two coats as well with the cloth, and that'll get that nice and sealed up. And then I can, uh, on this side, undercoat, and on this side, start doing my, uh, my body filler to finesse that panel. All right, here we go. All right, this is episode 17, and today is April 27th, 2022, and this morning I picked up my paint and 2K primer that I'm going to be using on this project. It's the Nason line, and even though I'm still a long way out from painting, I decided to go ahead and buy it because the place I get my paint from has already had a price increase uh, in March and I just wanted to preempt the price the next price increase which will probably happen sometime soon with everything being as crazy as it is in the uh, the world and the economy and so forth so anyway it's uh, called stealth gray and I put a little bit of it on this little piece of sheet metal this is probably close to what it's gonna look like get it out here in the sun So, get the sun to hit it right here. That should be about right. So it's got a little bit of blue in it, which I like. I like this color uh, since I started the truck restoration right there uh, several, several years ago and almost painted the truck that color, uh, or this, this color, except that I decided to go with the uh, original Cardinal Red and uh, but I've liked this color ever since then, so I'm gonna use it on this Jeep here. Right. Looks like this is blurry for some reason, but anyway, all right. Uh, so today, well, I'll go over what I'm gonna cover today in a little bit. All right. All right, here's my patch piece, uh, fiberglass cloth that's gonna go in from the back side of the fender. And like before, I'm gonna use this fiberglass resin with a hardener added to it. So here we go. All right, here's that hole I patched with the fiberglass um, and it's obviously set up and everything. I was gonna fill this with some of the uh, short strand fiberglass, but I don't think it's necessary. And, and all it's gonna do is just maybe get up higher than what I want it to be in order to weld that that scab in right there. So what I'm going to do is uh, clean up the edge around here and then go make my piece for that. And uh, of course, spray the backside of the, the scab with uh, some weld through primer. And uh, I think this is gonna be good to go. And then from underneath, when I go to undercoat the vehicle, I'll, uh, I'll seam seal the underside of that real good. I might put some fiber fiberglass on the other side. Uh, and that's not going to be an issue. So, all right, here we go. All right, I got this uh, scab part welded in and the weld ground back. Um, and I didn't try to fill in between every one of the welds uh, because I had an area that blew through back here. I wasn't able to get my little uh, copper backer, which is what this is. Um, wasn't able to get that in there behind it. So, uh, and the metal was kind of thin anyway back in here. Um, 
So what I decided to do is fiberglass uh, over it with this uh, cloth and resin, um, and that'll create a, uh, a watertight seal. Um, stuff's made for boats, so I know it'll work here. Um, and that way I'm guaranteed, you know, there's not any water or anything gonna get in there. Um, and then I will sand that lightly and then put some of the uh, short strand fiberglass over top of it just to kind of smooth smooth it and contour it. So that should be good to go. Um, yeah, my welds aren't near as good as uh, Claude's. <laughs> and by the way, I, I've mentioned Claude's name uh, many times uh, since I've been working on this Jeep. And Claude was a very, very close friend of mine that helped me restore that uh, 66C10 sitting over there covered. Um, Claude was uh, just such a great friend and he taught me a lot of things, uh, one of which was this body work that I'm uh, hacking through. Um, a lot of other things as well, but a very, very close friend and unfortunately he passed away a few years ago and um, I'm just so thankful for him, but uh, I miss him and uh, just in his honor, I named my truck after him. So anyway, I'm getting a little, <laughs> a little off track here, but I just, I know some of you out there that don't know me or, or Claude, they're probably going, well, who's this guy, Claude, you know? So anyway, hopefully he's um, proud of what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> so anyway, um, all right, so that pretty much takes care of this side. I mean, for the most part, I'll, I'll do some more finessing in here just to get that all smooth and of course here and uh, back in here. I might even do some of the, the fiberglass cloth and resin over top of these, some of these welds too that didn't, that didn't turn out real well. Um, it just, it's an added measure of uh, protection. So it is now time to move to the driver's side. So uh, I marked this panel yesterday, the, the, the rear passenger uh, marked it yesterday and it's ready to ready to cut out of there so that's what I'll get started on now all right see you in a bit all right I got this piece cut out and fit in there and it's a nice uh, uh, nice tight seam there good for welding I'll push down there a little bit when I get it in there but and on this side of it I created a flange from the out of there uh, so I could put some spot welds in there as well from underneath. So uh, this one's ready to go in and get that get that thing welded in place. All right, here we go. All right, I got this mostly cut out. Um, got it all cut here where it was marked. Uh, and then of course the floor goes up underneath the waterfall. So I was using my uh, air chisel up to uh, punch holes through there, or actually get up underneath it. It just ended up punching holes through it. Uh, it did get underneath it though. I, I feel like it's uh, pretty much loose back there. The area I'm dealing with now is right along this edge here along the uh, rocker panel. But there's a, if you remember from the other side, there's a brace that runs down through here uh, all the way back to the uh, body mount, which is underneath there, if I can get that. Yep, there it is. So you can see this uh, right here. That is attached with spot welds and I'm gonna have to get loose. Um, and the whole thing's gonna have to come out of there uh, all the way up to the, where you can see it stops. So that's gotta come loose so that the portion that I've cut will actually come out. Um, so I'm gonna stop here for today. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's it for today. And uh, it's now beer 30. So see you guys next time.